Go to Matthew chapter 20, if you will, and look what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Matthew chapter 20, and look at verse 28. As Christ speaks to the nation of Israel, his apostles, to the people there, his disciples, Matthew 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man. Now notice he calls himself the Son of Man. The, the term Christ used during his earthly ministry more than any other is the term Son of Man. Daniel chapter 7, that's the Messiah. Paul, our apostle, never used that term Son of Man in any of his 13 epistles to us because that's a Jewish messianic term from Daniel 7, the Messiah. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, verse 28, but to minister, now watch this, he did not only come to minister to the nation of Israel in those three and a half years, look what else, and to give his life a ransom for all. Is that what it says? No. For who? For many. for many. What I'm going to show you when Christ in his earthly ministry speaks about, speaks about giving his life, he speaks about it in a context of the Jews. Matthew 15, a Gentile woman comes to him and says, Lord, He'll go, go, go with me there. Go, go to Matthew chapter 15. When we think about the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to think of him in context of his earthly ministry to Israel and his heavenly ministry to us, the, the Gentiles. In Matthew 15, look at verse 21, if you will. Matthew 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. Now, Canaan... The land of Canaan is the promised land there. She's a Gentile. She came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And he says, I will heal her right now. Is that what he said, verse 23? But he answered her, what? Not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Not only did the Lord Jesus Christ ignore the woman, <coughs> his 12, uh, uh, it was the 12, they said, get this, get this Gentile heathen away from us. Send her, give her what I want, get she wants, but get her away. And he don't even talk to her. He answers them, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of who? Israel. Israel. Hold your hand there and go back to Hosea real quick. Hold your hand there. I just want to show you why he said that. The Lord Jesus Christ, everything he said and did was based on the Hebrew scriptures of Genesis through Chronicles, our Genesis through uh, uh, Malachi. Hosea, you can get Zechariah, go back, Micah, Amos. Uh, you, you got to Daniel, you went back too far. Right after Daniel, the one book in front of Daniel is Hosea. And if you will, go to Hosea chapter 13. In Hosea chapter 13, look at verse 14. This is uh, Jehovah speaking to the nation of Israel. By the way, the, ter the name Hosea means Savior. If you study out Joshua, Joshua is a, oh man, it's awesome. I got to give you this. Moses brought Israel out of Egypt, but he died before he got into the promised land. He was able to look at it. Both him and his brother Aaron, Aaron represents the, the Levitical priesthood. They both died before going into the promised land. Moses got to see it, Aaron got to see it, but God put Moses to death and Aaron to death. You know, they, they were supposed to speak to the rock, but they struck the rock. Remember that? Well, that's typical. Moses, that law is not going to be the issue with the nation of Israel in the kingdom. It will with the Gentiles, but Israel will have a new covenant where God puts his spirit and causes them to keep the commandments. So Moses couldn't go. But also Aaron couldn't go because Aaron's, Aaron's priesthood represents, Aaron and Moses are brothers, Aaron's priesthood represents the Levitical priesthood, and the Le Levitical priesthood, according to Hebrews, is not the issue in the kingdom because they're going to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In other words, that old thing is going on, so they don't go in. But who takes the nation of Israel into the promised land? Joshua, right? Joshua's name is Jehovah's Savior. It is the same, it's the Hebrew equivalent to the name Jesus in the, in the New Testament, Jehovah's Savior. But Joshua, if you, if you just do a little study, God sticks that right up in there. He calls Joshua the son of Nun, Hosea the son of Nun. Just when you, when you look that up. Savior, Hosea means Savior. And look what the Savior says to Israel. Hosea 13, verse 14. 
I will ransom them, speaking of Israel, from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. <coughs> Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. It means he won't change it. He's going to raise Israel's believing remnant up. So when Christ says, I have come to be a ransom for many, the many in the verse is the nation of Israel, particularly the believing remnant. Now, Paul does quote this verse in 1 Corinthians 15, later speaking about the body, but that's, gonna, that's a different resurrection. You remember Ezekiel 37, the, the valley of dry bones? And he, and he says, oh, Ezekiel, son of man, go and look at those dry bones. He says, what you see? I see some dry bones. He says, speak to those dry bones. Tell them I'm going to raise put some sinews on them, put some meat on them, put some muscles in them, and raise them up a strong army and use them for my glory. That's Israel in the kingdom. But until then, all Christ was focused on, go back to Matthew, was the people of Israel. So he didn't answer the woman. Matthew 15. Look at verse 23. Sorry, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of who? Oh, that's important. You know, when you're in a denomination, they use this type of verse and they go, you know, you're the lost sheep, you're the lost sheep, but you're not the lost sheep. The lost sheep, I got to show you this. Hold your hand there, Ezekiel 34. I just want you to see it with your own eyes. All these things that Jesus Christ says during his earthly ministry are to Israel according to their prophetic program. Look at Ezekiel chapter 34, if you will. This is right before the dry bones of chapter 37, so we'll just look at chapter 34. And I want you to see what the Lord says, verse 1. Ezekiel 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed who? Themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Now who he's speaking to? are the religious leaders of Israel. You remember when the Lord came, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. See, he's thinking about these verses in Ezekiel. He's going, I'm the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So Christ came to, when he says, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost, it's the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He says, those shepherds aren't paying attention to the sheep. I'm going out there and getting all those sheep. He says, if one of y'all have 100 sheep, and one gets away in the flesh, you understand a, a, a shepherd would go out and get that. He says, why wouldn't I do that? And now he's going to abrade or condemn the religious leaders of Israel. Go to verse 4. The diseased have ye not strengthened? Interesting. In Israel, when a shepherd had a diseased lamb, that man would take that lamb into it and, and patch up and fix it. And that's why Jesus Christ came healing all manner of sickness and minor disease among the people of Israel.